Hello everybody and welcome to Chess Diagnostic. Here's a recent game that was played between John Watson and Alexander Kostenowik at the Isle of Man 2017 that really teaches you how to play the Nimzo Indian as black, the classical variation, as well as some cool knight maneuvers. It starts with d4, knight to f6, c4, and after e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4, we have the typical classical Nimzo position. Now, in the Nimzo, the strategical content is quite simple. White will allow black to double his pawns on the c-file, but black will give away the dark square bishop, and this light square bishop will have some trouble developing. So white gets the bishop pair in compensation. Let's see how Kostenowik and Watson deal with these strategical problems. So after e3, we get castles, bishop to d3, and then d5, staking a claim in the center, and also preparing something like d takes c4 to open the light squares. After knight to f3, developing the knight, preparing to castle, Kostenowik plays b6. So this is a main way to deal with that light square bishop problem in the Nimzo Indian. Black will take the knight on c3, doubling the pawns, develop the bishop to b7, place the rooks on the c and d file, and just attack those pawns and try to keep all the pieces active. So after a3, forcing that dark square bishop to decide, Kostenowik takes, doubling these c pawns, and then we see an immediate d takes c, opening those light squares for the bishop, and then c5, trying to strike at the d-pawn and in the center, and also creates some further weaknesses for white. Now white doesn't want to take, of course, because the queen would take, preventing white from castling, as well as creating more weaknesses on that c-file. So after castles, we get queen to c7 with the latent threat of takes and threatening the c4 uh, bishop and the c3 pawn. Watson moves that bishop back to play c4 and also protect the bishop. Bishop to b7, c4 protecting that pawn, and then Kostenowik just resumes development with knight to d7. Watson plays bishop to b2, uh, preparing to connect the rooks and place his own rooks on the c and d file. Rook to c8, rook to c1, rook to d8. Then we see queen to e2, accomplishing the last opening objective of white, which is developing the queen as well as black, and rook to d8, or rook to d1 is coming soon. So we get h6, just preparing for an endgame, giving the king some space, h3, accomplishing the same, and then takes, and queen to f4. Now the queen moves forward, not to really start a kingside attack, of course it's threatening to take that knight and double the pawns, creating more weaknesses for an endgame, but the real idea behind this is to play queen to h4 and then offer a trade of queens. Now Kostenowik's preparing that in advance. After the knight moves back, protecting the pawns and the knight, we see the idea of queen to h4. And then queen to h5. Watson goes for an immediate queen trade, and now we're in the endgame. So black stands a little better in the Nimzo Indian because he doesn't have as many weaknesses. He has this beautiful pawn structure, and his knight or his uh, rooks are placed centrally on the d and the c files ready to attack the weak c4 pawn but he did trade the bishop pair and for now white's covering all his weaknesses so we see g3 covering that f4 square the knight comes back to keep it active and then after f4 we just see some end game play where white is trying to keep his pieces active and black is preparing to pile up on the c4 pawn Rook to c7, preparing to double the rooks eventually. And then we see something like uh, knight to f3, protecting that d4 pawn. And white really is going to have some trouble defending his weaknesses. He really has to create some active chances in this game. Bishop to a6, stacking up pressure on the c4 pawn. And then we see a4, just giving a space um, for development of that bishop. And here's where the knight moves come in. So knight to c5. A rather sudden but quite logical tactical move. If the pawn takes, it's not really losing a piece because he'll win that bishop. It was pinned. And even if the pawn takes here after, then 
white's going to face a lot of trouble because that light square bishop, the defender of all the light squares and the, uh, the weaknesses on c4, is gone. So the task is a lot easier. Of course, Watson doesn't allow that. He moves the bishop back. The knight moves forward, and Kostenovich just making these dancing knight moves that are quite cool in my opinion. Knight moves forward, again exploiting another pin of that pawn. If the pawn takes, we've won an exchange, so we don't see that, of course. And also threatening this fork on e3. The rook moves over, the knight dances again, knight moves back, the bishop moves back, threatening the knight, so it has to move back again. And then Kostenowicz simply reroutes the knight because it's in the way of this rook to attack the c-pawn. Knight to, knight to e7, knight back, knight to f5, attacking the d4 pawn. So the game ends pretty suddenly after the knight moves to f3, attack or protecting the d4 pawn again. Bishop moves back, threatening to undermine the d4 pawn. Kostenowicz going to win a pawn, and the game is pretty much over at this point. But Watson makes a sudden and simple blunder with c5, and then we get bishop to e4. Hitting both these rooks with a skewer and winning an exchange, as well as many of these pawns will fall soon after. So this was a quite simple and brilliant strategic game in the Nimzo Indian. Now, we're not talking about the strongest opposition here, but these are international masters and grandmasters, and I think a lot of games um, at the lower levels are much more instructive than just the top players' games. So I'm going to start featuring a lot more 2200 to uh, 2500 games because they really feature amazing strategical content, cool moves, and you just get a lot more dynamic play because there's more mistakes, realistically. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that game, and I hope this analysis helped you play the Nimzo Indian better. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.